Should the Vikings trade Kirk Cousins? You out on Kirk Thuggins already? I've never been in. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> I don't know where you got this impression. I, I've never been in on Kirk Cousins. Maybe it's just because, like, before they before the Browns traded for Deshaun, I was all in on Kirk. I was all in on Kirk. Like, please go. My get thing him. on Kirk Cousins was like, look, man, if you want to get your heart broken in the playoffs, that's a real good way to do it. I was thinking. I was thinking. Hey, look, at least we'll be there. You know what I mean? See, that works until you lose there, right? That's 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 the trap every fan base puts themselves in. Hey, man, I just want to be there, and then you get there and you lose, and nobody's just like, "Well, guys, aren't you just glad we made we live it through this with the Cavs right now?" You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> to Cousins, my feeling is if you're Minnesota and you're willing to allocate a first round pick to Booker, and that means it's over with Cousins because it's a first round pick, I think if you're willing to do that, you should really consider just trading up for Anthony Richardson. Now, I know it won't be easy. It'll take a lot of draft picks. The Vikings don't have a lot of draft capital. But my feeling, guys, is that Taking a quarterback late in the first round is kind of like betting half of your savings on an investment that's not likely to return very much. Like, you might as well just go all in, right? And, yeah, it would be a dramatic reset, and there's obviously a little bit of risk in that, but I personally think Anthony Richardson would be worth that level of risk. Yeah. What do you think about that take just, just from that standpoint? I agree with Mina that drafting a, a quarterback late in the first round is basically like the epitome of scratch of buying a lottery ticket and hoping you're gonna win like a million dollars or something like like it's the hit rate on late first round quarterbacks has to be like astronomically low like it like just just terribly low like who's who's the, the last one we remember is Lamar and nobody thought like, like a lot of people going into that draft didn't think he was gonna be that good. Obviously, everybody was wrong, but like the chances of you getting a Lamar Jackson late in the first round is just not great. It's not great. Like it's not great. So if you're gonna if you're gonna take a quarterback, if you're gonna go get a quarterback, and we've talked about Anthony Richardson, like he is the epitome of boom or bust. And if he hit you going to be good for 15 years. So like that if you go if you're going to take a risk, that's the risk you take. And you just go up there, you go get him. What a wild difference that would be from the Kirk Cousins experience to Anthony Richardson. But here's also like to add to Mina's point. <clears throat> taking a quarterback at the back of the first round is like You know when you buy a new phone and some people save up, some people don't. But it's like getting the phone you kind of want instead of the phone you really want, right? Mm-hmm. Like there are some things that it makes sense to just get the cheaper one, right? Things that are disposable, you know, generic food sometimes, like you can make that move with it. But then there are things where you just got to spend an extra dollar because if you don't, you're going to spend your whole life with that item thinking i should have got the iphone pro you know what i mean ain't nothing worse when you get the android because you was trying to save four hundred dollars and then you look at all your friends on iMessage and you're like damn i should have just bought the iphone i should have just bought the extra 150 you know and now you stuck with that phone for the next four years getting green bubbles Or you get an older iPhone or whatever you want to use. I don't want to upset no Android people here. But the point still stands. There are some things like a car, like a phone, where it's like, hey, if you can get what you want, get what you want. Because if you don't, you're going to end up never wanting the thing that you want. And you know who's a perfect example of this code? You know who's a perfect example of this philosophy? In, in in the inevitable inevitable end of of of, of picking the oh, I kind of want this one. You know who 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 embodies that the most? Who? Kirk Cousins. Dog, <laughs> it's Kirk Cousins. That's who does it. Like you think about, hey, let me get the guy I kind of want. 
Kirk Cousins. Like, that's the guy you kind of want. You alluded it to it, too. You wanted Kirk Cousins until you thought you could get Deshaun Watson. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'll take it if that's all I can afford because it's much better than nothing. But all of a sudden you get that raise, you're going to spend that extra 200 on that. Another thing, and this is just life advice, another thing you don't want to go cheap on, if you get a robot vacuum, spend the extra $200 on the good one. Just, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> spend the extra money. Get one with the LiDAR and the, and the, and the wall detector stuff. Yeah, I promise you, if you ever get a robot vacuum. And for, the, for those of y'all who do, y'all know what I'm talking about. Just spend the extra hundred dollars. It ain't gonna kill you. I don't know. I don't know where we just went, but but you know, the life advice. I'll just say, doing there life. are purchases. There are purchases where the TV. Right. I was talking to my dad about this. The TV is another one of them purchases. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Don't if you sit there and you get the TV that you kind of want, but you don't get the TV you want. Every time you look at that damn TV, it's gonna look too small. You know what I mean? I could have got the 75 inch. I could have got the OLED. Something that's going to look a little off with it. You're just never going to be happy. Get the one you want. And quarterbacks are the TV of a football team. Absolutely. Get the one you want. All Listen, right. Man, is you settling for, settling for a quarterback and setting your team back potentially a decade, mm -hmm. uh, years. And if you got a chance to go get the quarterback you want, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying drafting Anthony Richardson is go work out. There is a there is a, a decent chance he may never reach the potential that a lot of people see. And there's always a chance with any with any young player coming into a draft, whether it's NFL, NBA, there's always a chance it may not work out. But man, there's a chance it might work out. And here's why I would argue that drafting a quarterback at five is less detrimental to your future than drafting. Like if you draft and miss on a quarterback at five, that's less detrimental to your future than drafting and missing on a quarterback at 22. And the reason I say that is if you draft somebody at five, there is a building wide commitment to that player. There has to be a level of consensus in that building to make that decision. If you draft somebody at 29, it's all right. Well, I don't mind it. You know what I mean? And then that quarterback's coming into a, a situation to where not everybody's looking out for that dude's best interest because there's probably some dude that's like, I like the next class better. You know what I mean? I don't want him to stop us from getting a quarterback that I like next year. Again, get the TV you want. You know what I mean? <laughs> because when you draft Brandon Wheaton, you're going to be thinking about Andrew Luck every time that man plays. You know what I mean? Just get the one you want. How many teams have made that mistake where they're like, I'm going to be smart and get a quarterback in the second round or in the back end of the first round, and then they end up just never having a quarterback? There's no being smart about a quarterback. There's not enough of them to be smart about. So, you know. I always advocate for if you don't think Kirk Cousins, the dude that's going to take you to a Super Bowl, then guess what? You looking for a quarterback just like everybody else. So, hey, look, man, the Browns took Baker Mayfield first overall, mm -hmm. and then Andrew Berry and Kevin Stefanski got in there. They were like, "Hey, man, I don't think this is the guy that's going to take us farther than maybe winning a playoff game every every once in a while." And what did they do? We ain't got the quarterback really? they wanted. Yeah, quarterbacks in one position were like being I ain't enough. Like it just ain't, ain't enough. enough. Being it's even not being enough. like pretty good isn't enough. Yeah, like Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is pretty good. He's pretty good. People talk like you can't win the Super Bowl with Dak Prescott. Like that's that's what I'm saying. Like that is what it is at the quarterback position, and it's a tough one because you are giving up being a contending playoff team for at least two years if you go up and you get rid of Kirk Cousins so you can play you some Anthony Richardson then you gonna stink for two years <laughs> I promise you that that brother is not playing a game until he's 23 but <laughs> also it might be awesome you know what I mean like 
So it, you know that the ceiling is higher with him if you hit than it is with Kirk Cousins. And if your problem is that you keep hitting your head against the ceiling at the quarterback position, I don't see the reason not to do this. Now, Cole, try to play contrarian to me. I know we both kind of agree on this. What would the argument be against it so we can give that justice? I mean, th- that's an easy argument. You have a quarterback who, and, and for all Kirk's faults, especially in the postseason, you win, you win a lot of games with Kirk Cousins playing, man. You win a lot of games. You can make the playoffs. And sometimes in the NFL, just getting into the postseason, you never know what could happen. Weird stuff happens. Guys get hurt. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You really just got to get in there and then let the chips fall where they may. And what we know about the NFL, more than any other league in the world, NFL is about winning games. It's about winning games, mm-hmm. being competitive, and winning football games. And if you're trying to sell a, a fan base in a front office and a coach and an owner on, hey, this guy might be really good in two years. But until then, we ain't going to be that good. Like that's That's tough. That's tough to sell. That's tough to sell to people, man, especially when your team been winning. That's a tough sell. So I get I get it. I get it. I would say everything you said about, hey, man, you get in the playoffs, nobody knows is true. Unless we talk talking about Kirk Cousins, though. Like, you could just, <laughs> it ain't happening. It ain't never happening. Kirk Cousins is part of what has to go right for somebody else to go into the championship. And what I mean by that is they play Kirk Cousins in the playoffs. Like, that's usually <laughs> how somebody somebody like the San Francisco 49ers with no quarterback gets in its NFC championship game, right? Like, this, it just is what it is. Like, I just don't see it with him for whatever reason. And I get the point about you don't want to mess up a kind of good thing. But at some point, man, if you dating somebody and you realize it ain't going all the way, how long do you stay in a relationship knowing it ain't going all the way? That's fair. But I'm going to throw this out to you. Let's take it. Let's take a look at another team. San Francisco 49ers. Had Jimmy G. Went to the NFC Championship two years. Went to the Super Bowl with Jimmy G. They say, you know what? We've seen our ceiling with Jimmy. We're going to trade up. And we're going to take Trey Lance. And so far into this experiment, Mm -hmm. they regret that trade immensely. (laughs) Like, like, Like immensely. So that so so when you're looking at arguments for not doing this, that is the argument for not doing this. <laughs> but moving off of Jimmy Garoppolo still proved to be the right thing to do because did their quarterback play not get better this year? It, it got better, but not the guy they traded all those first round. Hey for. man, you just gotta be looking. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, if you're not looking, it's not going to get better. That's all I'm saying. That's my point. You got to be looking. Like, if you're not looking, you ain't never going to find no solution to the problem that you ain't looking for no answer for. And it took the 49ers one year of looking to be like, ah, man, we could do better than him. (laughs) With Brock Purdy. Like. And Mr. Relevant. What are like yes. what is the odd, what are the odds of you taking taking somebody with the last pick of the draft and him actually being some, like somewhat productive? That's crazy. Th- that never happens. It never almost happens. It never happens. Like they, they got lucky. Ever makes like, a team. Let's, let's be like, honest. They got lucky. It's a they story when Mr. Irrelevant makes a team, and they did get lucky. They got lucky. But they also was looking, and also <laughs> if they was as committed to Jimmy G as the Vikings are to Kirk Cousins, a Brock Purdy could pop up. And you would have to get rid of him during training camp because what you going to do, bench Kirk? But Brock, you going to explain that? You know what I mean? Like, so having Kirk Cousins doesn't even allow you that opportunity to get lucky. It doesn't allow you the opportunity to get better. You're just going to have Kirk Cousins, who, by the way, is getting close to 35. And, like, I know Tom played forever, but dudes like Kirk Cousins fall off a cliff after, like, 32. So... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you're the Vikings, this is the time to get off Kirk Cousins. 
if you want to know when it's a time to get off your mid quarterback, it's when people would actually be mad that you traded your mid quarterback, right? Because you don't want to trade them when everybody want to trade them because that means everybody know what the deal is, right? What was the right time to trade Baker Mayfield when everybody would have been furious about it in 2020? That was the right time. Apparently that was the optimal time for return. This is the time for the Vikings to do it because Viking fans will never be more upset at trading Kirk Cousins than now. And I feel like that's when you got to cash out. All right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. I know a lot of Vikings fans. I know a lot of Vikings fans. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. They trade here right now. I don't think they're gonna be that mad. <laughs> because they know what's up. They know what's up. But some other teams don't know what's up with them. And that's all I'm saying. Now, I don't know how you end up getting a top five pick out of Kirk Cousins. I don't know who's gonna do that. When, like, Lamar can't get a contract offer. Of. <laughs> okay. But... Maybe somebody is willing to do that. If somebody is, you're the Vikings. I think you 100% have to consider it. If you have come to the conclusion, and remember, this is Quasi out there from the Cleveland Browns. Part of the front office that decided, hey, we're going to get off Baker Mayfield. Is out there now in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. He might be deciding it's time. Man. I mean, hey, listen, Andrew Berry probably, not even probably, is one of, if not the most aggressive general manager in the entire NFL. And of course he learned from him. If he learned anything from if he learned anything from Andrew Barry, he trying to get off this man right now. That's what I'm saying. I get there is a comfort of having a Kirk Cousins. I understand that. That some people are gonna not want to get off that comfort or they bought into he's underrated or you had to defend Kirk Cousins in the forum because he played for your team and you're tired of people picking on him. So you've grown an attachment to the dude because you want him to prove the world wrong so you can get a win on Twitter. I understand where you at. But that ain't going to matter in the playoffs, dog. Would he embarrass you again? Like just, just move. I'm telling you, this happens all the time. This happens all the time. It's hey, automatic. We live, we live this with Baker. We lived it, man. We lived it. I'm, I'm, I'm warning Vikings fans right now. Get off of them now. Get off of I, them now. I, Viking fans are like, I'm trying, dog. Like it's. This is the time to do it. Now, let's say theoretically you get to five. Let's switch the conversation up. And. Anthony Richardson's there. But instead of Bryce Young being taken early, you're looking at Bryce Young and Anthony Richardson. Cole, what you doing? We've had this debate before, right? Like we've had this debate before. But this is different because we're talking about the Vikings. And we have two who have Justin Jefferson. And who are trading what I'm assuming is going to be a lot of draft picks, future draft picks on top of that, to get up to five. I mean, you, you throwing Kirk Cousins in, he worth something. <laughs> like, they, you know they're going to yeah. be trading some future picks to get up to five. Uh, I feel like to justify what you're going to have to give up to get there, you have to take the biggest way, and you have to take Anthony Richardson. I feel I feel like you gotta you gotta you gotta go for the grand slam. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. I like mm -hmm. Bryce. I think Bryce is gonna be good. I think he might even be like very good. He might be great. The durability stuff I think is real, and I think that's like a real concern. But if Anthony Richardson pans out, like we talking about, just a monster at quarterback, a, a literal monster. Okay, let's say theoretically. Anthony Richardson has a 25% chance of becoming a great quarterback. One of the great quarterbacks. One of the most unstoppable dudes for a span of five years. 25% chance there. Well, let's say 15. Let's, let's cut it back to 15. Okay. But you know that Bryce Young has a 60% chance of becoming and you don't know how he gets this honor, but a multiple pro bowler, multiple time pro bowler. What you doing? 
Ooh. And also keep in mind, you're trading Kirk Cousins. So if this guy stinks, that's your job. Ooh. You ain't getting fired for I. <laughs> but you would have traded I for what could up end up potentially being I. But Anthony Richard does have that 15%. What you doing? Now now the stakes are high, Cove. What you doing? I've always been a man that liked to gamble. Give me Anthony Richardson. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm taking Anthony Richardson. But before I take that pick, I would like to speak to my lawyer <laughs> to make sure that I have unemployment benefits in the case of a termination of my contract. I would just like to make sure that, like, look, make sure the land is soft because it's probable. You know what I mean? That's the thing about this Anthony Richardson. It is probable that that might not work out. But boy, if it do, <laughs> that, is, that is the, it is the most tempting thing in the world. Like, either that works out and everybody looks like a genius or it doesn't and everybody's gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.